Today we're going over the flame rectification process and that's the flame proving process for a gas furnace. We're going over the flame rod, we're going over testing and the significance of the ground wire. I want to show you the front of the combustion box because this is something that a technician cannot normally see on an operating furnace and you have your hot source igniter here, you have your burner tubes and then you have your flame rod. And so what's happening is you have your fuel and air mixture is coming out of the burner retention head across this hot surface igniter where it's going to be cherry red or orange. You're going to have your fuel gas igniting and you're going to have your flame traveling across this way over here and then your flame is going to travel from this burner retention head across the flame rod and so this is the flame proving device to make sure that the uh, gas is fully lit across all four burners and there's nothing really special about the flame rod other than it's a stainless steel rod that sits in the flame. So we send alternating current into this flame rod and the flame is rectifying the alternating current to direct current. We have a small, very small amount of direct current that travels from the rod through the flame to this burner retention head and then to a dedicated ground wire to the furnace control board or the ignition control module. We want to start our explanation over here on the flame rod wire. And so the power's off to the furnace and I'm going to pull this wire off and we're going to be checking for voltage. And so I will just take my one clip from my multimeter and put it right here. And then we're going to take our other one, we'll put it on the ground. And so we're going to be turning the power on to the furnace and we want to measure our voltage to the flame rod. So we just turned the power on to the furnace. We don't have heat, air conditioning, or fan calling to turn on, and you can see we're measuring 61 volts. So anytime the furnace is on, we have 61 volts going to that flame rod. So make sure to not try to touch that wire or anything like that. Don't touch the flame rod when the power's onto the furnace. So we're going to turn the power off, and we're going to first examine the flame rod. Now that the power's off to the furnace, we can remove our flame rod. So after you remove a flame rod, you can inspect it and really they typically don't go bad. They're just a stainless steel rod and has ceramic here and you just want to clean this off. And you can do that with some non-soaped steel wool like this. You want to have a fine grit so you don't want to really leave scarring on it. That's going to allow other carbon dust to accumulate. You could also use a Brillo pad. So you want to get any uh, soot off of here because what that's going to do is it's going to impede the electrical flow of the electrical current from the rod to the flame. And so if you look at this one right here, this one is pretty bad. And so I'm going to take you in for an up close look at this. So you can see where there is the melting of the flame rod and you can also see the, the carbon dust uh, that's formed on there. So this is one that we would replace as well. You can see the rust right here and on the connection, and this would all impede the electrical current traveling through here. Now let's get into the testing, and you can just take a multimeter clip on both sides of the rod. You're gonna have, should be 0.0, .0 ohms of electrical resistance. In this case, you see I'm measuring 0.1. That might have to do with the alligator clips. There we go. Uh, so that should be good. And you just wanna make sure that it's clean. You wanna inspect this to make sure that there's no cracks in the ceramic. And the other thing you could do is you could take a resistance reading from here to here. You should have nothing. So you should be reading OL. Oh well. so, so we're good to go. And so the, the one thing I want you to be aware of is it may have anywhere from, say, 50 volts to 180 volts from the furnace that is basically connecting onto here, and it's sending that alternating current into the flame. And so it just depends on the furnace how much voltage it's going to supply but you can just measure that just with your, your multimeter. Now I wanna take a look at the ground wire and we're gonna take a look at the flame rectification readings on our multimeter. The very first thing that's gonna happen is the inducer motor is running and after that is proven by our pressure switch, our hot surface igniter is gonna turn cherry red, which you see. And then we're gonna have the flame be ignited and then we're gonna be able to measure our micro amps in direct current by having our multimeter in series with our flame rod. And so you see 2.5 microamps. So you see the symbol for micro right in front of amps on our multimeter. 
typically your microamp signal is going to be anywhere from say 2 to 10 microamps and so I have seen it as low as say 1.8, 1 1.9 1 uh, but the whole point is that you are sending this small electrical signal back to the control board verifying that the flame is present. So if you have an issue where the flame just goes out then that might be caused by a flame rectification issue and it may be a ground problem. So right now we're getting ready to measure our microamp signal again and I just want to show you what it looks like if you have a bad signal. And so you can see we have about 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So if the flame rod is not in the middle of the flame right in front of the burner retention head, you're going to have a problem. So maybe it bent out of shape or maybe it's burnt or maybe it is covered in soot. That's going to be a problem. So you can see we only had 0.3 microamps there, so if it's under 2, you may have a problem and the furnace is not going to work. So what you're really looking for is, say, 1.8 or higher, preferably around 3 microamps, but some furnaces just are not uh, designed to end up having that high of, like, say, 4, 5, 6, 7 uh, microamps. A lot of them have between 2 and 4 microamps, uh, but the higher it is, the better, and you'll know that you're not having an intermittent problem if it is higher. So now I want to take a look at the ground wire leading back to the circuit board where it's completing the circuit for the flame rectification signal. As you can see, we disconnected our ground wire from the ground frame over here and we put our multimeter in series with that wire and we want to see if we can measure a microamp signal uh, with our multimeter probes in series there. So this is the path back for the DC microamps going to the control board. So as you can see we're measuring 2.6 microamps. In some cases you can do this, in other cases you can't because this is connected to other things such as the gas valve, uh, the gas valve ground or another location, but in this case you can measure it on the ground going back to the control board. So now we're down at the furnace circuit board and you see we have a dedicated ground wire right here going into the plug. That's not for just the grounding of the circuit board, that is for the flame rectification signal. So oftentimes you can find a dedicated ground going as close to the combustion box as possible just to make sure that there's no uh, high electrical resistance problems between where this ground wire is taken and to that burner retention head because you have to have a completed circuit in order to have this circuit board measure the DC microamp signal to verify that there's a flame. Here's another example of a gas furnace with a ground wire at the combustion box. And so this one actually connects over to the gas valve and then it travels down over to the circuit board. And so we can see that down here. And this is where the circuit is completed for the flame rectification signal. The next thing you want to check if you suspect a flame rectification problem is to check the ground wire. And so we have our hot wire, 120 volt hot, we have our common neutral wire, and then we have our ground. So we're going to set our multimeter onto AC voltage, and we're going to measure if there's any potential difference between our common and neutral. Remember, these two are connected in the breaker box, or should be. And so there should not be any voltage difference between the two. And so we're measuring 0 0.07. So if we were close to a volt, or even half a volt, that would be a problem, and that would indicate that you have a bad ground to your furnace. And remember, our flame rectification signal is traveling on the ground wire. And so if you have a problem with that ground, you may have a problem over here on this ground where the circuit board is trying to determine if there's a flame. Now, this is not necessarily the spot where you want to check it at. You want to check it on the circuit board. Now we're going to measure for a potential difference at our circuit board between the line neutral, which is our common, and the ground. So this is the ground wire heading up to the combustion box and we have our power to the board on. You can see the light is flashing and we're measuring 0 0.056 and so if we were to move this and just put it on the regular ground we should measure very similar. We were measuring 0 0.056. So before we were measuring on the wire nuts at this furnace, we actually had the, uh, the switch in the off position for the furnace. And so now we're measuring 0 0.056. Okay, so what I want to show you is what's going to happen when we have a problem between our 
ground wire right here and up by the combustion box. So now you see it's measuring 5.7 volts and that's because our ground wire right here is no longer uh, touching the combustion box very well. It's just barely touching. And so then you have a potential difference and that's going to be signaling to you that you have a problem uh, with that ground wire. And so you need to trace it all the way back to the combustion box and fix it. Let's also do one more test. We're going to do a electrical resistance test on this wire right here from here up to the combustion box. We're going to turn the power off to the furnace. We're going to take this probe right here and we're going to put it on the ground wire up at the combustion box. So you can see between point A and point B on this ground wire we have 0.7 ohms of electrical resistance. That is not necessarily good, uh, but that could also be due to my multimeter probe, uh, not in the... Oh, there we go. So now we're measuring 0, 0.0 ohms between this point right here and up at our combustion box. So this wire is intact, so you just got to make sure that it is screwed onto the combustion box very well. There's no paint blocking it or anything like that. If you want to learn more about gas furnace troubleshooting and gas valves and hot surface igniters and limit switches, I've got several videos down in the description section below, so you can check those out. And make sure to check out the articles we have over at our website at acservicetech.com. We're also going to have a book out on mini split operation and service procedures that's going to be coming out January 1st. So make sure you check that out at our website at aecservicetech.com. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.